All right, guys, this video you're about to watch was a podcast we filmed with Snakes and the Fat Man, Chris Eaton himself, the guy. He's an awesome, awesome podcaster. He's got a great, great podcast that you need to check out. He's kind enough to let me take the audio from this and we put it on our channel here. That's what you're watching now. And then we've overlaid it with some of the JKR's best snakes from 2020 and a few from older. There's some Easter eggs in there, a few things we haven't shown. So enjoy it, enjoy the podcast. Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure to check out Chris's podcast. I'll be putting that in the comments below as well. There's bunches and bunches of episodes and they're all great. Now, I've been friends with this guy for fucking years now. He supports the podcast. He's been an awesome source of help whenever we needed it. And he's just been a great friend. Here's my interview with Justin. What's up, guys? I'm here with uh, Justin Kabilka, who took time out of his schedule actually doing shit to make dick and fart jokes with me. And that's pretty much what we're going to do tonight. Uh, Justin, what's up? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good, man. How's everything down there? Great, great. I'm actually sitting here by a, outside by a fire and relaxed. It's a great time for a podcast. Yep, that's fucking ball python money right there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the way it goes. Now... What do you got going on? How's uh, how's Chase feeling down there? Chase is good, man. We're just we're plugging away. Um, we've gotten kind of a, a good new normal now in the new facility, and um, um, things have been have been real steady. And, and and I I like I like just boring, I guess, in a way. I mean, we got great snakes, and that's not boring. But like day to day, we got good operations down, and we're just taking care of customers and shipping snakes and breeding snakes and hatching. It's it's awesome now how many people are there in addition to chase um right now we have of course myself and then we have a guy who's doing rodents um almost full time um and then i have a girl who helps with social media as well oh cool so okay it's a yeah. it's a total of four of us yeah you're not doing all that social yourself right because that would be fucking insane <sighs> I was until fairly recently, but it was way too much. I couldn't keep up with it. It was killing me. Yeah, you, you and uh, fucking Miguel with the fucking videos yeah. out literally oh like God. three times a week. Uh, he does a lot more videos than me. That's, it, it, I think he has some help too because there's just no way. It, it'll, it'll completely overtake your life. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, your audio is going in and out a little bit. Just want to let you know. All right, all right, all right. I'll get up and walk a little bit. Yeah, keep it, keep it good. All right. Um, now, you, you're obviously, the, you know, the top guy in the game right now. Um, now, when you, when you think about other people being successful, what mm -hmm. do you look for in, in that? Like, because that's what people are looking at. Like, like everybody sees the happy video, Justin. Uh, you know, but right. nobody sees the misty odds fucking crying over a clutch of eggs, Justin, you know? Right. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so when you think about being successful, what do you think about that? Like, like if you look, look up to somebody, mm -hmm. even in a different industry or whatever, what are the things that you're looking up to about them? Right. That's actually a great question. Um, so I spent a lot of my years when I was first doing this thinking, you know, Hey, like I, I was always watching, watching my back as I was, you know, trying to make cooler and cooler stuff. Watch my back and be like, man, anybody could be doing this. And, you know, there's, but I, as I've gotten, you know, now in the last couple of years, gotten to, you know, at the top or just, just to a nice steady beat. I, I start to look at, you know, there's, there are some, some qualities that I, that I see in other people that, or if I think for myself is something that you have to have in order to, to be up, you know, doing this year after year. And, and part of it is that nothing to do with actual ball pythons. Part of it is just, you know, having a really steady lifestyle, um, having a steady home situation, being able to care for animals year after year after year without it falling apart. Um, and that is, is rare, honestly, among people to have that steady of a, of a home life. Right. Um, because building a collection is, is a lot like, you know, you're rolling a snowball up the hill, you know, and it's getting bigger, but man, you're working for years until your collection kind of passes a certain level, maybe, um, where suddenly instead of buying holdbacks, you're making holdbacks. 
Um, and then that's like level one. And then there's the next level where um, you're keeping the holdbacks, but you're actually making enough cool stuff that not only can you keep holdbacks, but you can also sell what other people consider to be holdbacks. Right. Then you have money involved. At that point, you're actually making money. Um, and then you get to a little node level and you start to realize when you're cresting the hill, but that's a, that's a good, it's hard to do that in sooner than five or six years. And most people, their situation changes, they may get married, they may have a spouse who doesn't like snakes, um, they may run into some kind of financial hardship, and it's rare for them to get to that point. Um, so that's what I look for in other people. I look for, you know, a good eye, um, you know, for things. And then, honestly, just year after year, they're just steady, they're making good stuff, they're upgrading, they're doing things, and it, it, if they can do it long enough, it will definitely come, come to a new level at some point. Right. Well, all right. Well, well. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fucking blow up some sales for certain people. Name three breeders that you no. respect and like. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of people that maybe aren't aren't necessarily right in the uh, the public eye as much, um, but I feel like it's upcoming. You know, I say Will Nussman is a really good guy he's been doing this a good while and starting to really make some some moves um will moreau's up in canada i've seen him just kind of blow up this year but honestly it's not it's not just this year thing he's been doing it for a long time and it's just cresting that you know cresting that hill um that's too offhand of course miguel everybody knows miguel miguel you know he, he's done it on a, on a faster schedule than I think I've ever seen him do it, but it seems like there's no there's no end no end to what he's able to do in the future, which I'm really really proud of him and you know really excited to see him, see his success. Yeah, so there's yeah. three three right there off the top of my head. They're all great people. Beautiful. All right, cool. Now, as most people probably could tell, I bought like these uh, <laughs> this deck of cards that gives a bunch of questions <laughs> to ask on a fucking <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's what I'm doing, uh, you, you know, that's what I'm doing to fucking make it interesting. Hey. Because being that I suck your dick so much and you were on three fucking times, people already know Justin, you know. But it's funny because yeah. um, the the repeat listeners are definitely plugging into, like, um, you, uh, Brittany, uh, Ozzy, you, you know, all, all the same good old school, you, you know, kind of people. Sure. Now, who, I, I'm going to, I don't even know, th this is not a card question. Who did you come up with that you actually used to have a rivalry with or a hatred towards, and now you're, oh, you guys man. are more friends? I don't know. I'm not sure there is someone that I, that I would say... See that it fits that bill. You know, it's interesting. It, it, first of all, you, you called me old school a second ago, which which I take offense to. Cause I don't I don't see myself that way. But but I think I think a lot of people. I'm starting to realize. You know how you, when you realize you're suddenly your, your kids realize think that you're old. Right. Exactly. I, I'm starting to see that around the industry. People like see me as an establishment now, and you know, the guy who's always been around, and that's so hard to accept that. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I would say things, things change, you know, over time, you, you know, you kind of go into the industry with a lot of people, a lot of friends fall away along the, along the path. Um, and, uh, but I, I've, I've learned to manage relationships better in the industry and, and, uh, and that's probably been a, a really positive thing I would say. Well, yeah, and I mean, I, I, you know, I, I didn't mean to call you old school. I just mean that meant that you were doing this for thirty fucking years. But um, it, it's like you have to know that you're at a point where an an endorsement from you could change somebody's fucking company for what they're doing. So you have to know that you. Have yeah, I kind of realize that theoretically, but but I can't I can't live that way. You know, I try not to live that way. Right, right. Um, no, I'm it not still saying, surprises me. I'm not saying live that way. I'm saying revel in it for a little <laughs> while and be, you, you know, like you're allowed to be a dick. Uh, the, the thing is that a, a lot of the newer, and I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, um, when we were coming up, even eight, eight or ten years ago, 
the the top people in the industry were kind of dicks, you, you know, right. like overall. Yeah. And what For I'm sure. noticing now is that the, the top people are not dicks so much anymore. Uh, because, yeah. I, I mean, you you know the people that I'm talking about. It's like fucking, the, sure. you, you know, the people that were, were always like, uh, would talk the most shit. They would fucking... You, you know, stab their mother in the back for 10 extra bucks. And the people like you and Brittany and and Ozzy and, you know, even to a lesser extent, um, people like Anya and Matt Littlefield and, and these other small yeah. players, none of them really do that. I, like, I don't get that that scumbag vibe from a lot of the big people like I used to, right. you, you know, in the business now. And I, I think that's a good change, actually. Yeah, I think it's really interesting to look back now with some some hindsight at the early, you know, early people in the industry um, and how much success that they had, you know, just crazy success early on. And yet, for the most part, a lot of them, I wouldn't say stumbled into it because they were into the reptile industry and everything, but they they caught the wave. They didn't necessarily buy into the wave. You right. know, they were they were already they were already there. Um and they, I don't know, I don't want to say anything that would be derogatory for them at all because it's not, their, but they just, <laughs> no, but they, I mean, they, they, they set it all up for all of us. We're very thankful for them, but in a way they weren't, for the most part, they weren't business people coming into the industry. The industry, the, the business came to them. Right. right um, yeah. and, 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 uh, there's so much money. A lot of backstabbing and everything. And, you know. you're, you're breaking up again, brother. I think I lost you. Up, oh, yep. Hold, please. Well, we were talking about the, um, you, you don't want to badmouth people, but they, they, people did a lot of shitty stuff just to get the, the, the money right, you know, at the time. Yeah, well, to an extent, they were, they feel like everybody was threatening their money, you know, but but the industry has changed so much and uh, now it's gone real wide and now we're selling to the public. And a lot of the animals are, even if they're expensive, they're going to pets. Right. And, and they're, and not everybody knows everybody. Not everybody knows all the infighting. And, and uh, so now, now it just people who come in and just conduct kind of regular business where they take care of people are definitely advantaged in today's climate compared to previously. Well, I think it's some kind of normalization, you know, in it, whereas now, uh, it, you know, th there's a place in the market for the $100 snake and there's a place in the market for the right. $10,000 snake. It's a um, very different different world we're living in. Yeah. Very different, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, and the thing is that, that even, even now to a point, you know the degenerates because they argue with you on the price of a $300 snake and then you'll get a phone call for a, you know, a $6,000 snake and the transaction goes in and out within a day, you know, and moves really smoothly. And right. you really got to fucking blow a guy to get his $300, you know, uh, that, right. that's the, yeah. um, that, that, that's the part of the, the business that I don't like because I mean, you have to be able to explain to people. I think that if you just buy, Thirty three hundred dollar snakes. You're never going to be a Justin type, you know, player in the industry. Right. You know? and, and a lot of people still think that. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of people, uh, especially you know the fucking white trash that I talk about all the time. That you know they they just they're like I'm going to buy you know ten you know combos you know of snakes under five hundred bucks and I'm going to make a living out of this next year. And, and you know right. that that's not the case now. Like, like anybody who doesn't know that that's the case is a fucking asshole right now. But a lot of people don't know that. You know, a lot of people don't know that. And that's, that is, a, I guess, a hard part as a seller. You know, we deal with a lot of people every day. And um, they may come to, to and be like, hey, I'm investing in ball pythons. And I, have, I, want, I want three, you know, $100 snakes from you. And I don't know if it, to what how much, how many hours do I need to spend with them letting them know that that's not going to work for them, you know, or do I just tell them the snakes and, and say, Hey man, good luck on your dreams. Um, it's a, it's definitely a, a, a tough part of it a little bit, but I, th I think for the most part, people are much more clear eyed now than they used to be. Well, also, making, when I, making it, I, I think huge. that when 
it gets to calling you, people know you enough to where you, you probably don't get a lot of those, hey, what do you have for a hundred dollar calls? Yeah, I, that's true. It is definitely less less every year. Yeah. 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 Now, who sure. who were some of the guys that you actually did look up to twenty years ago when you started making videos in your fucking dorm room? Yeah. For me, it was a Ralph, hundred percent, thousand percent Ralph, all across the board. He was the guy who who sold me on the dream. And I, I honestly, he and I never had any relationship whatsoever. Right. Um, but I loved everything he did. I loved watching him. And, and you know, initially, you know, in whatever way I could, I modeled my company after his. Not maybe the attitude involved, because that wasn't me, but but um, certainly the animals and, and, and just so, and so inspired by him. Um, him more than anybody, but I was, I was impressed with everybody with the combos they were making. But uh, but he he had the ability to to show the world with it through through his website and you know, YouTube videos and everything that what he was doing it was so so incredible. Now, did you have anybody that you were actually like that that kind of mentored you and you had a personal relationship with on how to actually run it as a business, not as just uh, here you're gonna make a, a bunch yeah. of cool animals right. and, and just sit right. on it. Like like what was the best piece of advice? that somebody gave you in, in Justin becoming Justin? That, you know, honestly, I had very little, very little help. Um, aside from what I would just glean off the internet, I'm you know, definitely an introvert and I was a young kid and I didn't, didn't uh, reach out to people for help. Like maybe I even should have. Um, I literally kind of did it by myself, learned everything by myself. And it, served me well because I, you know, even now I kind of have this attitude, which is an old school attitude, which is, Hey, just figure it out. You know, try, keep trying stuff and you're going to screw up, but keep trying stuff. Right. Um, but remember, you know, back when I was kind of getting started, you know, there were a bunch of assholes in the industry and that's the vibe they sent out for the most part. Um, they were not very approachable. Um, not super necessarily willing to help at least, at least not from my perspective. Um, but I think that even today though, I think that, you know, you can get all this help on forums and I see people, you know, throwing advice out, you know, tons and tons of places now, but I think people are better served just to go into their snake rooms and try stuff to learn faster, you know, and a lot of, a lot of what has become kind of common knowledge or conventional wisdom. It's not even true these days. It's not even true. Um, uh, but it just gets repeated for enough years where people think it's, just how it is well that, that leads me to my next question which is also another non-card question how pissed off were you when those fucking people that were keeping ball pythons for six months threw you out of their facebook group <laughs> what was it i forget what, what group it was it, uh i i forgot yeah. too because it was so long ago but yeah i, I forget what it's called like, it, yes Honestly, man, I don't get pissed off very much. Um, uh, but but I was I was like I, I was incredulous a little bit. But you're you're gonna have to explain but, that word because uh, incredulous. Yeah, we we have a lot of dumbs <laughs> listening, right? <laughs> I didn't, uh, I couldn't bring myself to understand or believe why why that would have come come about. Um, but you know, I, a lot of people have a lot of ego, and that's okay. You know. Um, I feel, I feel for them, but I don't know. I guess when I see people acting, ah, what the fuck? That's the backwoods of Georgia. Back. Um, but, but it, it, it is, I mean, I mean, the people that, um, are, are there still, even to these, you know, to this day arguing how you shouldn't keep a ball Python in a tank. It doesn't matter if it's a pet, right? you, you know, like fucking, right. I got friends that kept the ball python in the tank for 30 years and then it's still, you know, alive and doing great. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, no, I, no, I, but no, I do, I do tell myself though, that if everybody had it all figured out, if everybody, um, conducted themselves well on the internet, if everybody could lose their ego, then I'd have a lot more competition. So I don't go about trying to correct that in yeah, the no, world. No, 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 <laughs> you know, I like let them be themselves. It's, it, you know, I'm, I'm me be myself and it wouldn't work out. Okay. Yeah, well, fucking uh, that's good. There's a little bit of behind, behind the Justin there. Um, yeah. 
because I know with uh, with all the accusations of me sucking a dick, that's going to be the next hashtag is uh, behind Justin that I get. <laughs> all, right. all right, we're going to ask you a question uh, on the card now, okay? Uh-huh. It, it, if you had to ask your wife, okay, mm-hmm. what would her favorite body part about you be? <laughs> Oh my goodness! I honestly don't know what her answer would be. Um, you know, I really don't know. I can't even speculate about that. She's never said, "Hey, I like your," and specifically mentioned. <laughs> She's like, "I like your cash." Uh, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part about you is that cash, right? <laughs> oh, oh, that's my a God. good question. That's a great question, man. That's, that's you got me stumped on that. All right, well, fucking, you ask her and get back to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, let's just uh, move move the the thing over to, like, what do you want to talk about? Like, like what, what's exciting that's going on over there these days? Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm just excited about the industry in general. I just, I feel like, I feel like every time, every year, We go into it with an expectation of how it'll be, and we always find that there's just another level out there, that there's a new new angle, and there's something new to be excited about. Um, The combos keep giving, like, weirder and weirder. Like, we're not running into any kind of problem, like, any kind of wall, or or, uh, they're not diluting down to looking like crap, or, you know what I'm saying? It 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 just gets better and better, and that, to me, is so exciting because... You know, I look, I see more and more people getting into it and good people. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm just very bullish on the whole thing, especially in this economy. Like, even with COVID and everything, people have been focusing on their hobbies more and, right. and thinking about side income. And it's been, it's been really neat to see. Well, well, also, I remember what, when we were first getting into this. Um, and, um, mm-hmm. you, you know, he'd be like, here's a yellow belly blah, 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 whatever, blah, 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 you know, and four other recessive genes, and it would be like a white snake with uh, some black marks on it. And, sure. and it would just be like, like, why the fuck would I pay $8,000 for that fucking, you know, animal? <laughs> and these days, especially with the stuff that you and Ozzy are coming up with, you could see everything in these fucking snakes. You know, right. it's like... And, and, Obviously, I'm being facetious when I say every, you could see everything in them. But what I'm saying is that they're not just the gray snake with the black mark on it anymore. You, you know, it, yeah, we, a lot we've of- had to kind of reverse engineer a lot of this stuff. Like take a step back and say, OK, maybe maybe one copy of pastel or no copies of pastel or, or no lesser. Or no, you know, keep out of the blue eyed Lucy, pro, you know, um, project a little bit just in order to say, because these genes are overwhelming and we're going to take a step back some of those common genes that were mixed into almost all of our snakes, we're going to find the ones that it's not mixed into and start to kind of re-engineer these from the ground up without putting in overwhelming genes that overwhelm the pattern and color. Well, that, that's funny uh, that, that you should say that because I, I remember years ago when I, um, uh, you know, I would have to deal with these fucking jackass scumbag big shots and they're like, all Justin is doing is putting two ten dollar jeans together, and <laughs> and yeah. making something nice out. You, you know he's not doing. Oh anything no, that's the worst. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then little, you know, and then the ten dollar jean guy fucking jumps ahead of the pack by millions of fucking dollars. So it, it's just like, you know, for people that that downplay the shit that you do, you know, like, I know that you'll never tell them to go fuck themselves, but, you know, I'll tell them to go fuck themselves all fucking day long. Uh, it, it's, it's so, you know, now that I think about it, you, you were more right, you know, eight, eight, ten years ago, it was more about tearing down your, your competition than bringing up the other guy, you know? Yeah, it was. Well, people, people, they got caught in the old mindset, which the old mindset initially was, um, that we're just going to find new genes and start them really high and then run them down to where they're nothing and then do it again with a new gene. Right. And it was all about the new genes. Um, and that's part of the reason why everybody had such an inkling to be so nasty to each other because it was a really a zero sum game. 
if somebody sold one of these snakes, they were taking money right out of your pocket. And because it's just all about getting, selling these, these, uh, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars snakes, whatever. Right. Um, and you know, initially when I got in, I was not motivated by money. I'm not, I, I'm more motivated by money now than I was then, but that because back then I, I had no money and what money I had was given to me by my uncle who invested in some snakes and I didn't even care about, he never asked me for a return initially. So I was like, well, I just want to see what these snakes look like together. I don't right. want to make more clowns. I want to make, I want to make lavender clowns. And so I'm bringing a clown to a lavender and making a bunch of snakes that, that had very little value at the time because nobody thought that, that the industry was going that direction, you know? Right. And, and I was passing by the big paydays over and over and over again, more out of intellectual curiosity than because I, because I knew that there was a, a good financial reason to do that. But it turned out that that was a good financial decision. In the end, we ran out of new genes, right? And it was all the people who had, who had invested in themselves deep year after year, um, putting animals on the shelf and thinking ahead. They're the ones who, in the end, started winning the day. Right. So, yeah, people who didn't do that, it's, it's easy to, to pick apart, you know, those who did. Oh, yeah. Down the road. Yeah. And, you, you, you know, you could go to a show and fucking see those same people that are doing the same thing that they were doing 10 years ago and still complaining about why they're not doing as well when it's it's an absolutely new business. It, you know, I, I, I would say probably about three or four years ago was when the industry really kind of changed more to the, uh, uh, you, you know, it kind of got passed down to, to a, a group of people that would run it better than it was being run. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more about, I think it's more about just about seeing the future, realizing that people want beautiful snakes. They don't care if you tell them, Oh, this is extremely, extremely rare and it doesn't look particularly good, but you know, they, they want beautiful snakes and they want, um, and you, in order to make those, you have to dig deep and look back at, you know, at snakes that have been done in the past and, and these, some of these genes that are overlooked. Right. You know, I, I always like to say that these, these, these morphs were not discovered in order of how important they are, yeah. you know, cause we, we tend to think that the, mo the, the, the most recent gene that was discovered should be like, ri you know, ridiculously expensive and crazy. And no, we found some of the best genes first, right? but, be but they got overlooked after they got more common. People saw like, well, I don't want that. Cause it's too, you know, it's old school, you know, what is not, you know, no, we, we're going after the ones that, that have the most to give that, you know, now we have a whole different palette we're working with is bringing back one of those old genes and see how it transforms things. And nobody's even looked at that anymore. Now, at the end of the day, and, you know, obviously, if this exposes anything, you don't have to tell me or, or any part of your business. When was the last time that you had to go to Africa to fucking bring back a new gene? And would you, you know, yeah. is the amount of new stuff coming out of Africa even necessarily worth it anymore. I'll be honest. I'm not really connected that much to Africa or, or to what comes out of there. I don't think that unless they've reached out to me, I, I wouldn't even know it. Um, I'm so focused on my own stuff. And, and as when you get to a certain part of the industry, excuse me, um, you kind of, you, you have to really balance, you know, these what we call dinker projects, right? These things that you're trying to, um, prove out with what you know you can do, you know? So for, for example, if I bring a, a male, interesting new dinker out of Africa, if, some, if one were to fall on my plate or something, I would have to be like, well, I can breed this to this female and potentially, you know, prove it out. Or I could breed a Pompeii to the same female and for sure make good money, you know, right. which, right. which are you going to choose? It suddenly becomes a real hard choice where to, to somebody who, doesn't necessarily have a lot of firepower on the shelf the the lure of the dinker is the potential, you know, it's, it's all versus nothing, which is right. right. It, you know, it's more the gamble, you know, that way. Right. But it makes more sense to gamble for them to gamble. And so I think that, uh, and these days we have so many awesome morphs out there that even if you can prove a dinker out that, Oh, this is this somehow, you know, is actually genetic. Most of them are really subtle, and they're not necessarily going to compete with all the really cool morphs that we have out there that can be purchased for far, far less. Um, so you end up spending a lot of time with a dinker trying to say, okay, well, here's why I think this snake is worth 
you know, 20 grand or whatever, because it can do this, right? right. You have to prove that. Cause if you don't prove that, then it's all speculation and no one's going to want to pay your dog, your, 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 your price. Um, so you spend, you know, five or six years <laughs> putting into all this different stuff and trying to figure out which, you know, which one it, you know, works best with. And maybe you'll hit one that like, everybody's like, wow, it does that. Okay. Well, I'll spend, I'll spend your 20 grand. Right. But at that point you've invested not only, not only your initial clutch, you've nested many, many, many clutches since then. And you've had to nest in order to maintain the integrity of the gene, you have had to hold on to basically all the offspring. And so now you suddenly you have a collection that's filling up with a dinker gene. Um, lots of males that you got to hold back because you don't want to put them on the market before right. anyone cares about them because then it's just competition, right? Yep. So, so suddenly there's all these dynamics that come to play. And by the time you get around to actually being able to charge $20,000 and have buyers who are willing to pay for it, you have invested a large chunk of your life and your collection right. into the proving of a dinker. That's not for me anymore. You know, that's oh, not yeah, for me I, when I, cause I can, cause I have a for sure path to do the same thing. Right. But for other people, it can work, but it's a long road. And a lot of people get into it kind of willy nilly, not realizing that the success is, is never not earned. All right. Let's, let's do the, do the no bullshit thing. And, uh, We'll, uh, we'll go from there, all right? Okay. All right, hold, please. No bullshit. No bullshit. No bullshit. No bullshit. What the Leave your bullshit at the door. All right, now, thanks to these cards, I got a bunch of new questions. <laughs> Uh, I left it. I left the bullshit at the door, so we're done. It's, I, it's I, good. I, we're good I, to go. No, you fucking everybody's. And you got it. and you got Justin say shit, which is which is a uh, yeah you know, new level. It's a new a podcast first. They have no clue. They, they <laughs> and, and you know what's funny is like I, I get these calls that are like, oh, are you really tight with Justin? And I'm like, I call him once every three months, you, you know, and we fucking yeah. talk for when, maybe an hour when he needs something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think I call you more often. Yeah, well, that's because I need I'm, something. I call you. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna call him and make fucking dick and fart jokes and fucking? He's gonna be like, all right, what was the point of this call? Like, like I'm well aware that you're successful enough where every minute of the day is accounted for, you know. Um, but you know, whatever. It's all good. It's fucking. You know, you 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 know, you find me to be a fair weather friend. That's fine. You only call me when you need some. And I think that's fucking. I think that's actually great hey. that everybody hears that. Because uh, I'll be calling you uh, up for a renewal of your uh, sponsorship. So it's all good. Yes. So anyway. See, there you right. go. I mean, you need something. <laughs> all right. yeah. Now, um, who would play Justin in a movie? Oh, man. Um, Harrison Ford. Really? I think so. I would think maybe that's, who I, maybe that's just who I want to be. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. That mu <laughs> that must be because fucking I, I was I was thinking young Ben Affleck. Okay, yeah, I can see that because you, I mean you still like what are you like forty five now and you still look like you're fucking twenty two. That's great. I'm thirty nine. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thanks Sorry. for that though. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now this could be anybody on the planet. But who do you hate the most? Who do you despise the most? Oh man, it could be anybody. Anybody. Um, man, who do I really hate the most? I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater. I know, I know, I but, you're know still, I but you're still going to answer the question, all right? Oh man. <laughs> Fuck I'm not that. a hater. I've been like, letting people get away with this shit for fucking right now, four years. Right now, okay, okay, okay. Right now, I'm really upset at our president. Okay, all right, that's I'll fine. tell you that. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the closest I can get right now. And it's not that I don't even agree with him a lot. I agree with him. I hate him still. I hate him and I love him. Hmm. You know, I, I, yeah. I I love him too, but I think the greatest moment <laughs> on television was when he was throwing the fucking paper towels at the Puerto Ricans. That shit was fucking funny, man. No, so he was ahead of his time. If he had been doing that just one year later, he would have been. <laughs> we were all like, we all were looking for paper towels. He would have been our savior. At the, just one year later. That's so right. That timing, he though, isn't yeah, it? he should have threw us the paper towels, right? <laughs> oh, my fucking God. That's fucking funny. Um, all right. If, if you died tomorrow, what would you regret not doing? traveling more traveling more i want i want to travel the world a lot more than i've been able to 
No, I've, I've I've gotten to do, I've gotten to to do it a lot, and it's like it's it's one thing I just wish I I, wish I could do it all the time. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, until there's a vaccine, I, I don't think you're going to be doing it much. Yeah, yeah, um, that's probably why I'm missing it so much. So, uh, what is something that you like that most people don't? Ball pythons, no. No, yeah, snakes. Well, <laughs> that's yeah, an easy one, man. I, I you gotta get harder yeah, questions on this. Say, I guess that's an easy one. All right. All right. If you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, what do you want to be? It's so funny because that answer, that answer is not a ball python. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. You know, on a recent, another pod, a rival podcast, it's Uh-oh. way worse than yours, I might say. Uh-huh. No. Um, <laughs> they asked me what kind of animal, what kind, what's my spirit animal, and I told them it's a human being. <laughs> oh, my God. What? That's how boring I am, man. Um, well, well, not to be a yeah. dick, but that's a pretty gay question, right? <laughs> Especially oh, okay. that that when for twenty bucks you could get a, a fucking deck of cards like this that gives you all awesome. Exactly, the really good questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, no, no I don't, I'm, I'm pretty happy with who I am. Yeah, right. Pretty happy. I come back as myself. Yeah, you fucking narcissistic fuck. Yeah, that's, that's right. Fucking, that's right. You're like mm. I'm that good. Like fucking, I would come back as me. All right. I'd miss me if I wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Believe me, there's a lot of fucking ass kisses out there that would say the same thing. Um, <laughs> now, all right, last question. When were your parents the most disappointed in you? Was that when you decided, when you asked your uncle for some money to buy snakes? Yeah, I I can't think of a time. They, they were definitely, I mean, they were not, they didn't come and tell me, you know, have sit me down for an intervention, but but they were definitely hoping this would just like disappear from my life. The snakes would, when I started that they were, both my parents are just like snakes, my dad, especially, but, and yeah, they would, they, they definitely would sort of be like, honey, are you, are you sure this is what you want to be doing? You know, that sort of thing. Uh, so. Are your parents still alive now? Yes. I yes. bet he's eating those fucking words now when he asks you to fly him out. Oh, now they tell them. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're always like, you know, those parents who like brag on their kids. Like, oh, you know what my son does? And, like, he just pulls up the Instagram and, you know, <laughs> a lot of that going on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I just, uh, I remember when, uh, when I first came back from Hollywood, it was uh, Thanksgiving time. And I was eating dinner with my family and um, the whole family was there. And I looked at my father, who had always kind of, like, uh, wasn't impressed with me by that point. And, mm. uh, you, you know, I just said, Dad, listen, uh, I remember when I was in college, you, we only had one car. And you let me take the car to, to school, and you ended up taking the train to work. And I don't think I ever thanked you for that, so I wanted to say thank you, right? And uh-huh. uh, my, thinking that that would be like a, a big fucking father-son bonding moment, right? And my father right. just looked at me, and he was like, yeah... Well, you know, you really did turn out to be a p- pretty big disappointment. <laughs> so, uh, that's, wow. Uh, yeah. That, <laughs> it is. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> honesty is good, though. My parents pretend like that's not the case. Oh, my God. That's fucking funny. Um, dude, thank you for fucking taking the time. Yeah, I had a good time. You know, Thanks I definitely for, had a good time. And thank you for me. calling that other podcast inferior. I like that, too. Okay. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I, I told them the same about you, but oh, you know, we'll let it slide. Fuck? That's not yeah, true. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the diplomat. I'm always the, yeah. <laughs> Man, and you, you fucking give me money and you fucking backstab me. That's right. You're That's like right. every fucking top drug dealer in every season of Narcos. Oh, God damn it. Anyway, uh, all right. Well, fuck that. Man, man. Right. it's been fun. <laughs> Thanks, Dude. thanks, and some awesome, awesome questions, man. You need to get some more of those decks. They're great. I, I definitely got to, you know, the problem now is fucking people are going to go get those decks now. And, and it was my Right, and then they start their own podcast, and now you don't have an advantage. That's right. And, and then all I these shit it. podcasts who are fucking doing YouTube channels in their <laughs> filthy living rooms are fucking, uh, <laughs> you, you know, going to be on par with the fat man. So, Dude. Thank you. I appreciate it. And hopefully the next one of these that we do, I'll uh, be down in your new place and we'll do it live. Yeah, that sounds awesome, man. Thanks right, a lot. Brother. Have, Have a great night, evening, man. man. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. So at, at the end of the day, he's just a fucking regular dude who's one of the nicest people around. And I want to thank Justin again for his continued support of this show and just being an overall good dude, man. Fucking class act. And um, I hope he remembers that when I call him up for his contract renewal next month.
All right, there you have it. That one's in the bag. Be sure to follow Chris on all the places you normally listen to podcasts. You can find Snakes and the Fat Man. It's a great podcast. It's great for learning this industry more, learning about the people in this industry more. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.